skin. It surrounds us, it covers us, it protects us from all kinds of things. They say it's our most important organ, but what would we do without skin? Could we survive? Would we just need to get more skin from somewhere, from anywhere? And thus is the theme of tonight's story, another fantastic one from Dr. Creepin's Vault. The subreddit I set up so you could share your stories with me and I could read them all to you. Now this one is a long one, so um, I put some timestamps in the video description, just in case you can't listen to it all in one go, you can break it up into smaller parts. Well my dear friends, it's once again time to sit back and relax with your favourite drink, and listen. Pine trees buzzed past us as we drove down the road. The song Sugar was playing on the radio. The smell of fresh cut grass and mustard flowers seeped in through the cracked car window. The scent of the flowers made me think of hot dogs. Oof, my stomach growled hungrily. Do we have any more snacks? I asked. My mother reached over to a snack bag she usually brought with her during long car rides and passed me a bag of pretzels. Share these with your sister. Stacy was sitting in her car seat, incorrectly singing the lyrics to the song. I scooped some pretzels into my hand and dumped some out into her hand. She shoved the snacks into her mouth. Crumbs fell from her mouth and landed on her Bugs Bunny shirt and pants. They did little to satisfy my hunger. Dad turned on the radio. Oh, I'm going to have to spend a couple of hours at the shop today, Jen. Mum's mouth dropped open in disbelief. What? I thought you weren't going to spend any time at the store before we leave for Jamaica. Dad let out a deep sigh. Look, I need to spend a few hours at the shop to get this order processed. Rover Rose ordered $50,000 worth of product. She sat back in her seat and crossed her arms sophomorically. Your brother always makes time for Kim. Dad rubbed the pulsating blue vein on his temple. It's only for a few hours, and we've been working on this for a couple of days. We should be done today. Mom huffed and rolled her eyes. Fine. You better be back home at a reasonable hour, Bill. We have to get up early tomorrow. We pulled into my grandparents' driveway. Their house was white, three stories with a shed adjacent to it. My grandmother stood on the front porch. Her face stretched into a jovial smile. She was wearing her purple nightgown. Blonde hair rolled into curlers. Her nose was huge. It always reminded me of the Wicked Witch of the West. My mother helped Stacy out of the car and walked us up to the porch. Mom and Grandma exchanged pleasantries. The smell of chocolate chip cookies filled my nostrils. I was starving and felt like I hadn't eaten for days. We went inside. As we walked down the hallway towards the kitchen, we heard the voices of the two tenants and Grandpa. Zombie movies are my favorite. Romero, John, one of the tenants, said. I don't see how you can stomach those gory movies, Nick, the other tenant, said. The kitchen walls were painted bright yellow, matching the yellow floor and oven. Grandma then pulled her world-famous cookies out of the oven. The only decoration was a painting of the Last Supper hanging on the far wall. Stacy and I took a cookie each from the tray. Gooey, melted chocolate oozed out between my fingers, making them stick together. Nick and John were sitting with Grandpa at the kitchen table, having coffee. John had his brown hair pulled back into a ponytail, a red plaid button-up shirt covering his bulbous gut, Coke bottle glasses covering bright blue eyes. Nick sat across from John. A grey, bushy beard and moustache consumed most of his face. Patriot's cap covered his bald head, and a red flannel and blue jeans covered the rest of his body. Grandpa was sitting at the head of the table. Hair as white as snow nearly covered his hazel eyes. His wife beater was drenched with sweat. His old, wrinkled face lit up as soon as he saw us, though. John and Nick offered us welcoming smiles. Hey, kids, Grandpa said. I grabbed a paper towel and cleaned the excess chocolate from my hands. Hi, Grandpa. What was that movie you guys were talking about? Night of the Living Dead. You're too young to watch it, though, kiddo. On the bright side, I got you something. He got up and walked into the living room. He returned holding something behind his back. 
I hope you like this, Tommy, he said, pulling his hand from behind his back. He handed me a Drew Bledsoe jersey. His lips parted in a sea of white once he saw the grin on my face. What about me, Grandpa? Stacy asked. I got something for you, too. Oh, it's in the shed, he said, leaving to get her present. After a few seconds, he returned with a bright red tricycle. Tricycle, tricycle, Stacy said, jumping up and down. She mounted it and clanged the bell. The bell caused a sharp pain in my ears. She noticed the painful expression on my face. A malicious smile spread, and she clanged the bell three more times. I'll kill you, I mouthed. Nick got up to leave. Thanks for the coffee, Joe. I've got to get to the farm. My buddy Jack is having a barbecue at five. You guys want to go? Grandpa asked. Uh, sure. They both said. Stacy walked her tricycle to the front door. Can we go outside and pay? Sure, you kids can go out. Tommy, you're becoming a young man. I think you're old enough to learn how to shoot. I was twelve when my father taught me. Seeing that your father is very busy these days... I figured I'd be the one to teach you, Grandpa said. Stacy rode her trike, while Grandpa and I went into the woods with a twenty-two and a bag full of empty beer bottles. Grandpa set up the bottles. He grabbed the rifle and then aimed it at the targets. I want you to watch how I do it. Then you try. Take a deep breath and then shoot. He fired a single shot and obliterated the bottle sending thousands of tiny brown sparkly shards of glass everywhere. Try to think of it as an extension of you. He handed me the rifle, and anxiety swam in my gut like a goldfish on speed. It took me a minute to hold the rifle comfortably. Then I aimed, shot, and missed horribly. Grandpa laughed to himself. <laughs> you remind me of me when I was learning. Take your time. You've got all the time in the world. There's no reason to rush a shot. I took a few long, deep breaths until I was feeling calm and collected. I fired and took out a bottle. Then I took out the other bottles. Oh, are there any more? Grandpa took the rifle from me, smiling. Nope, those were all the bottles I had. Maybe there'll be more in a few days. That horrible clang filled the air. We turned to see Stacy behind us. Gampa, I'm tired. Can we go inside, please? <laughs> sure, sweetheart, he said. We all sat down in the living room. Stacy grabbed the remote and put on cartoons. After a few minutes, she turned down the volume on the television so Grandma, Grandpa and myself would be forced to listen to her. Did I ever tell you guys about my friends? There's a girl named Amy who has a tricycle like mine. Oh, she's lazy, and she never picks her head up. She always has her head like this. She rested her head on her shoulder. Also, there's a man whose skin is all black. He always has a cigarette in his mouth, and he keeps asking me for freckin'. Do you know what that means? We all shook our heads no. Stacy looked confused for a moment. Then turn the volume back up. <sighs> the things the kids make up these days, my grandfather muttered to my grandmother. A buzzing caught my attention. A fly had landed right on Grandpa's wristwatch. <sighs> gotcha, you little bugger, he said as he smashed it. He focused his eyes on the watch. It's 4.59. We should get going. Since Mr. Williams lived next door, it was only a five-second walk over to his house. The blue paint job on his home was flawless, and the grass was freshly cut. We followed the smell of hamburgers and hot dogs into the backyard. You like the gory stuff, huh? We heard Mr. Williams say from the backyard. Oh, I love Ramy, John said. We turned the corner and entered the backyard. Paper plates and plasticware were set out for us on the picnic table. John, Nick and a girl about my age were already seated. Mr. Williams stood at his grill, flipping burgers. I like comedies. Caddyshack's my favorite. 
Groundhog Day is good, too. Oh, I love Bill Murray. I heard there's another movie coming out soon. The Cradle Rock is the name of it, Mr. Williams said. He placed a tray of burgers on the table. When he saw us, his old wrinkled face formed into a smile. Oh, hi, everyone. This is my granddaughter, Lily. We sat down and he served us. So, Joey, what's it like to be retired? Ah, uh, it's pretty boring, but, well, they keep me pretty busy. Grandpa tilted his head toward Stacy and I. Is she keeping you busy? Grandpa gestured towards Lily. <laughs> of course, Mr. Williams laughed. What grade are you in? Grandpa asked. I'm in sixth. The only class I like is English, she said. Grandpa took a bite out of his burger. You like to read? Lily nodded. I read horror books mostly. She looked at me. Do you like to read? Not as much as I should. If I read more, I'd probably read horror books too, I said. She scooped macaroni salad onto her dish. Want to come up to my room after dinner and take a look at my collection? Sure, I said. Mr. Williams took a bite out of his burger. He turned to me and asked, Hey, how's sixth grade going, Tommy? It's going okay. Pretty boring, but it's okay, I guess, I said. He swallowed. Yeah, I was pretty bored when I was in sixth grade. What about you, Stacy? he asked. Oh, I'm learning stuff. Lots of stuff. I love it because I get to see my friends every day. Miss Jackson is really nice. She bakes cookies for us, Stacy said with a smile plastered on her face. Mr. Williams looked at John. What do you do? John opened the bottle of ketchup and squirted some on his burger. I work at a gas station right now. I'm also a student studying business. Mr. Williams dumped a helping of potato salad onto his plate. Ah, that's great. So, where are you from? John took a bite from his burger. Oh, I'm from Greensville. Ah, rich blood, Mr. Williams said through a mouthful of potato salad. John sipped his coke. Yeah, you could say that. My parents run their own poster company. Mr. Williams wiped his mouth. How come you're not working for them? John looked at his burger, as if it could answer the question for him. I made the mistake of believing family and business could mix, and... Well, it doesn't work. So, I'm on my own now. My illness has made things even worse. There was an awkward pause after John spoke. A frown formed on Mr. Williams' face, and his eyes became sullen. Yeah, I understand. I used to run a motel with my cousin Jacob, on the outskirts of town. We had a falling out, and I haven't heard from him in five years. John shrugged his shoulders and ate his burger in three giant bites. I'm sorry to hear that. Nick swallowed a mouthful of hot dog. Well, I grew up with Joe and Peg. Joe and I went into the army when we were 18. After the war, I tried college for a bit, but I wasn't an excellent student. I grew up working on a farm, so I was able to get plenty of farm gigs. Traveled around a bit and then came to Birmingham. Joe here was generous enough to let me have a room for cheap. Mr. Williams got up from the table. I was never that good at school either. Anyone want ice cream? Yeah, we all replied. Grandpa got up from the table. I'll help you. They went into the house then, after a few seconds, returned. Mr. Williams was holding a container of chocolate ice cream. Grandpa carried bowls and spoons. Mr. Williams handed out the bowls of ice cream. Oh, can I have Freckkin for my friend? Stacy asked. Um, he squinted his eyes in confusion. I flicked her ear, and he laughed it off. Want to come see my collection now? Lily asked as she finished the last of her ice cream. I got up. Sure. We headed upstairs to her room. The bedroom was decorated with Nirvana and Nine Inch Nails posters, as well as Friday the 13th and Halloween movie posters. I looked at her bookshelf. I could make out some of the names on the spines. Her shelf contained books by Stephen King, Edgar Allan Poe, and Harlan Ellison. 
She stood in front of the case as if she were going to make a selection. Do you have a favorite? I asked. Lily scratched her chin. Oh, maybe it. I had to have my mother sign a permission slip to let me read it. At first, I thought it was because of the violence. After I finished the book, I realized it was for another reason. I scrunched my eyebrows. What was the other reason? She turned to me and pursed her lips. You don't want to know. She grabbed a book called Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark. Is that any good? Yeah, I read it when I was in second grade. It's a good start if you want to get into horror, she said. Who's your favorite author? I asked. <gasps> King. And a teardrop raced down her cheek. My father bought me a bunch of books before he died. My head dropped. Oh, I'm sorry, how did he die? She wiped the tears away. Car crash. I like to spend as much time as I can with my grandfather. He's the closest thing I have to a father. Tommy, it's time to go home. Grandpa called from downstairs. I gave Lily a hug. It was nice meeting you. Your grandfather is lucky to have a granddaughter like you. On the walk home, Grandpa asked. Hey, care to watch a movie with us, John? Oh, I'd love to, but I've got to get up early tomorrow, he said. We watched Ghostbusters before bed. That night I was sleeping on the second floor in one of the old guest rooms. As I was getting ready for bed, I heard a terrible screaming coming from John's room. Grandpa pounded on his ceiling. Turn your TV down, John. The screaming was no longer audible. I read the first couple of stories from the book Lily had given me. They scared me, and I was somewhat afraid to go to sleep. A few minutes later, I went to bed. Then I was awoken by the infamous bell clang. Wide awake and extremely pissed at my sister's inconsideration. Flabbergasted that this did not wake up my grandparents. I threw my door open and marched into the hallway. I froze in my steps. There was a little girl as young as my sister at the top of the staircase. She sat on a tricycle. Her neck lolled lazily to the side, resting on her shoulder. It looked like someone had wrung the girl's neck. It all felt wrong. Cold air kissed my cheeks. Bile crept up my throat. A rancid tang filling my mouth. I swallowed it. Hey, I said. The girl turned to me. She was as pale as a dead fish belly. Her eyes glowed like the lit end of a cigarette. She flashed me a broad, toothy smile. The bell clanged once more. The front wheel was dangerously close to the edge. A pair of charred arms shot out from the darkness and pushed her. Thudding filled the air. The chaos came to a crescendo with a crack and a pop. A loud shrieking filled my ears. It felt like needles were jammed into them. I dropped to my knees. My skin was cold and clammy, like I'd been in the bath too long. My pulse was racing rapidly. It felt like pins were piercing my heart. The pain was unbearable. Not knowing what to do, I began sobbing. Tears and snot cascaded down my face like a roaring waterfall. I curled up into a ball and eventually passed out. The next morning I woke up in a cold puddle of drool. I gingerly lifted my head up. The sun's rays rushed in through the hall window. Tommy, what happened? My grandma said as she rushed over to me. I... Uh, I was sleepwalking, I said groggily. She pulled me to my feet and scanned me with her eyes. You have no bruises that I can see. Just stay here, I'll get you some... Oh, God, what's the name of it? Advil, I said. She went into the bathroom and then returned with the pills and a glass of water. Wash up and come down for breakfast. During breakfast, I barely touched my eggs. All I could think about was the girl shrieking and who was behind those awful charred arms.
To avoid further concern, I ate my breakfast, a piece of toast and scrambled eggs. I was hoping Grandma would forget about finding me in the hallway. Can I use the phone? I asked. Grandma's eyebrows furrowed in worry. Sure, j- j- Tommy, I'll call you every name, but you're wrong. I was sick to my stomach and wanted to go home. I grabbed the phone and took it to my room for privacy. Hey, Tommy. I turned around to see John holding a VHS tape. I know you're interested in the movie I was talking about yesterday. I'll lend it to you, and it can be our secret. He handed me the tape. I took it into my room. Luckily, there was an old TV and VHS player in the room. I dialed my mom's number. Hello, Tommy. What's up? Mom, can I come home early? Why? A lump formed in my throat. I, um, just miss being in my bed. She sighed. Tommy, I know you're only twelve, but you need to grow up. Her voice was low and agitated, like it gets when I steal ice cream from the freezer. Okay. Calling me wanting to go home is something I expect from Stacy. She hung up before I could say anything else. I felt guilty, but I was still afraid. I returned the phone. My grandparents and Nick were sitting in the living room watching the morning news with Stacy. Last night, the Church of Omega was bombed. Authorities are searching for suspects, the reporter said. Nick shook his head incredulously. We spent all that time at war trying to protect this country. Now there's war breaking out on our own soil. Religion is a poison in this country's veins. How are you feeling? Grandma asked. I'm okay, I replied. Good, I was worried about you. I never knew you sleepwalked, she said. I'm glad you're alright, kiddo. My grandpa added. He dug into his pocket. Here. He handed me a hard butterscotch candy, like he did when he suspected I was upset. I eagerly popped it into my mouth. Stacy stopped paying attention to the news and sighed heavily. Can I go outside and play, please? Sure, go ahead, Grandma said. Having gotten permission, Stacy scurried outside to play with her tricycle. The news was boring me. So I followed her a few minutes later, hoping to play with her. Finding Stacy was easy. She was sitting in the middle of the sidewalk looking forlorn. I went up to her to see why she was so melancholy. Concerned? I asked her. What's wrong? She didn't bother to look up from the ground. Nothing. It doesn't seem like nothing. She slowly looked up. All right, I'll tell you. I haven't seen Amy. The image of the girl falling down the stairs flashed through my mind. Hmm. The man said he doesn't like you. He's mad you won't give him your kin. I wanted you to be friends with him. Why won't you give him your kin? Stacy, what's kin? I don't know, she replied innocently. A cheerful jingle grabbed her attention. The ice cream truck was making its rounds. Stacy jumped up and down. Ice cream, ice cream, can we go please? I nodded, and we made our way to the truck. Lily and Mr. Williams were waiting in line. They turned to us. Hey kids, nice day out, Mr. Williams said. Hey, how are you liking the book so far, Tommy? I was nervous. I felt like there were big marbles in my throat. After a few minutes, though, I found my voice. Oh, I like it. I really like the big toe. The book you were talking about yesterday really caught my interest. Can I borrow it when I'm done with the other one? Sure, Lily said. I paid for our ice cream with the money I earned from working at the shop. Stacy had almost finished her ice cream by the time we got home. Tommy, will you play a game with me? I grabbed a pack of cards. Okay, let's play 52 pickup. I took all the cards out of the pack and threw them on the ground. (laughs) Pick them up. Stacy crossed her arms and pouted. Oh, that's not fair. That's how the game's played. She picked up all the cards and handed them to me. 
here. I threw them on the ground again. Yeah, pick them up again. Grandpa! Stacy yelled. Grandpa walked in. What's going on? Tommy keeps throwing the cards on the ground and making me pick them up. Stacy complained. Grandpa playfully grappled with me and took me to the ground. I'll teach you to pick on your sister. He lifted my leg up. Do the count, Stacy. Stacy tapped the ground three times. One, two, three. Ding, ding. Grandpa wins. Grandma walked in. What's going on in here? Grandpa slowly got off the ground. I'm just defending my title. Grandma kissed Grandpa on the cheek. Well, champ, why don't we pop in a movie for the kids to watch while we make dinner? Grandpa turned to us. What movie do you guys want to watch? Oh, Jumanji, I said. Grandpa placed the tape in the VHS player. Dinner was ready after an hour. After dinner, we played a board game. I was savoring the daylight. The sun was making me feel safe. And then, night fell. Bedtime came. That night I was barely able to sleep. I kept expecting to hear that awful clang, or to see those terrible arms. I watched Night of the Living Dead to help stay awake. After the film, I fell asleep. I was only asleep for five, maybe ten minutes, when an acrid stench filled my nostrils. I heard repetitious whispering. My eyes snapped open. A burnt face was about three inches away from mine. A cigarette hanging from the corner of his mouth. His visage was mostly black, except for a few patches of red on the cheeks and chin. After a few seconds, I was able to understand what he was saying. He was saying, Fresh skin, over and over. Fear coursed through my veins like snake venom. I sat up and backed up against the wall. The rest of his body was like his face. I was shaking like a leaf. Tears were pouring down my face like they do when Dad screams at me for screwing something up at the shop. No, 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 I screamed. I lost control of my bladder, drenching my pajama pants with urine. The air smelled like cigarettes. The room filled with smoke. It was as hot as burning your hand on a stovetop. Sweat dripped off my ears and landed on my shoulders. The taste of smoldering flesh violated my taste buds. The man's arm shot out like a bullet from a shotgun and grabbed me, sharp nails digging into soft tissue. Blood pooled around his nails and dripped down onto the bed. It felt like shards of glass were being pushed into my arm. A teardrop fell from my eye and hit his hand, sizzling on impact. He violently jerked me up off the bed. I want fresh skin, he screamed. The bedroom door flew open. Light flooded the room as my grandparents burst in. I dropped the bed with a heavy thud. What happened? Grandpa asked. I... 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 The sobs were still in full strength. I couldn't even complete my sentence. Jesus Christ, tell us what happened, Grandma said, rushing over to me. She noticed the dark blotch on the front of my pants. Her face twisted in disgust. Oh, did you... I showered and put on fresh clothes. I examined my arm in the mirror. There were only four faint scratches. When I came out of the bathroom, Grandma and Grandpa were waiting in the hall. Grandma pulled me into a bear hug. I think you should sleep on the air mattress in our room. I don't know what's going on with you. However, I want to make sure you're safe. I didn't argue, and I went into their room. I still couldn't sleep for the rest of the night, despite having the protection of my grandparents. I couldn't get the image of that horrible face out of my mind. I swear, I could hear him down the hallway, muttering about fresh skin.
The next morning, I woke up alone in my grandparents' bedroom. The smell of breakfast permeated the air. My stomach growled hungrily as I slowly got off the air mattress. I could hear Stacy in her room talking to Grandpa. Grandpa, could I have a piggyback wide, please? Sure, sweetheart, he said. As I walked down the stairs, I could hear Grandma talking to my mum on the phone. He uh, hasn't sleepwalked in years, you say. You think he's making it up for attention? All right, I'll talk to him, Grandma said. She hung up and I tentatively finished walking down the stairs. I saw there was a plate stacked with pancakes where I usually sit at the table. I walked past the living room, hoping Grandma wouldn't spot me. Grandma's old, bony hand suddenly rested on my shoulder. Tommy, we need to talk. I cursed myself internally and turned to face her. Her wrinkled face furrowed in concern. Are you jealous of Stacy? Is that why you've been acting odd? I forced myself to smile to assuage her worry. No. She tussled my hair. Your grandfather and I love you both equally. I wrapped my arms around her. I know, Grandma. I love you too. She smiled, exposing her old yellow teeth. I made your favorite for breakfast. Grandpa came down the stairs with Stacy, her arms and legs wrapped around his body. Pancakes! Pancakes! Stacy squealed like she did whenever we had pancakes, and sometimes while well, I joined in. Stacy, Grandpa, and Grandma joined me at the table. A blood curdling scream suddenly rang out. It startled Stacy, causing her to shrink in her seat. Eyes wide and frightened. Grandma and Grandpa just rolled their eyes. Oh, how many times do I have to tell him to lower the damn TV? Grandpa said, shaking his head. I remained unbothered. I knew John was watching Friday the 13th, or some other horror movie that I'm not supposed to have watched. The screaming ebbed, then creaking stairs and feet stomping reverberated through the house. John ambled into our kitchen, his messy unkempt hair spilling down his back. A few buttons on his shirt were undone, allowing fat to be pushed through unopened sections. He was pale as a corpse. His eyes were empty and vacant. Morning, John, Grandpa said disdainfully. John didn't bother to reply. Instead, he walked over to Grandpa and placed a check in front of him. You smoke? Grandpa squinted his eyes in confusion. No, I don't. Peg and I quit smoking ten years ago. Why do you ask? John sighed and crossed his arms. <sighs> I keep smelling smoke at night. That's odd, Grandpa said, trying to make sense of the information. I've also been hearing this awful clanging at night. I haven't had a good night's sleep in the past couple nights, and I've been falling asleep at work. Well, my boss says if it happens again, I'm fired. So, um, I'd like it if there was something done about the smell and the noise, John said. My grandfather sat there nodding, listening thoughtfully. You're right, John. I'll see what I can do. John thanked my grandfather and left. Grandpa directed a cold stare at Stacy. Stacy, you playing a trick with your trike at night? No, Grandpa. It wasn't me. It was the girl, Stacy said. Stacy, he said sternly. Her head lowered in shame. Grandpa leaned forward. You need to take responsibility for your actions and be respectful of others. I worked in a gas station when I was 21, just like John. I know how it is dealing with people. It's probably worse dealing with people on very little sleep, and on top of that, well, his job is in jeopardy. No more tricycle at night. I'm sorry, Grandpa. I love you, Stacy said. He smiled and tussled her hair. <laughs> I love you too, sweetheart. What about the smell? Grandma inquired. My grandfather pursed his lips. Uh, it's probably Nick. I know he hates going outside to smoke, so he lights up inside. He probably hoped no one would notice. I'll talk to him later. 
It's funny that he mentions that. Oh, I've been hearing the same clanging and smelling the same smoke, too. I thought it was just my mind playing tricks on me, Grandma said. After breakfast, Grandpa ran some errands. Stacy and I watched Honey, I Shrunk the Kids in the living room while Grandma read. Through the window, I heard a car pull into the driveway. The front door slammed, followed by heavy footsteps going to the third floor, echoing through the house. Grandma looked up from her book. Oh, that might be John. I hope he didn't get fired. Once the movie ended, Stacy glanced out of the window. Outside, it was the perfect day. The sky was bright blue and cloudless. The scent of fresh-cut grass filled the air, and butterflies with beautiful opalescent patterns on their wings had landed on the windowsill. She turned a little head towards me. Will you push me on a swing? I looked out the window. <laughs> sure. We went outside. Stacy sat on the swing. A bell chime filled the air. I turned and saw Lily riding her scooter towards Stacy and I. Grandpa Jack and I are going to the bookstore tomorrow. They have a wide variety of horror books. I was wondering if you wanted to go. I'm sure my grandfather would let me go. I'll have to ask, but well, I'm sure it'll be okay. Her face lit up like a Christmas tree. <laughs> okay, I'll see you tomorrow. After a few minutes of pushing Stacy, I had an odd feeling in the pit of my gut. The head stood up on the back of my neck. I felt like someone was staring at us. I looked round and saw John staring down at us from his window. I could swear I saw a charred hand caress his face. Nausea swept over me like a tidal wave. All the muscles in my body tensed up. Feeling paralyzed, I wanted to scream. But when I opened my mouth, no sound came out. John seemed to realize I was staring back at him, and he moved away from the window. The smell of pork chops spread through the air. Grandma's head was poking out of the kitchen window. The sun was trapped behind an archipelago of white, fluffy clouds. Tommy, Stacy, time for dinner. Come on, Stacy, I said. She jumped off the swing and we went inside. After dinner, Grandpa grabbed a deck of cards. You want to play Uno, kids? Sure, we both said. Grandpa dent out the cards and I scanned mine. Um, Grandpa... I wanted to ask if it'd be okay if I went to the bookstore with Lily and Mr. Williams tomorrow. Is that okay? Sure, Grandpa said. The game took a half hour to finish, and after the game, we all called it a night. As I lied in bed, terrified of what was going to happen, I heard screaming coming from the third floor. I surmised John was watching another horror movie too loudly. Eventually, I fell back to sleep. Happy the man hadn't visited me. I knew he'd be looking for skin and might be coming for me again. Fearing his visit, I stayed awake until my eyes would no longer stay open. I woke up feeling great because I'd slept the entire night without any unwanted visitors. But an awful smell offended my olfactory system. It smelled like fish guts. Despite the terrible smell, I was still hungry. I hurried downstairs and joined everyone else at the table with a smile. And Grandpa placed French toast sticks on my plate. To my dismay, that putrid stench stuck to my nostrils, not allowing me to enjoy the sweet aroma of the golden brown logs. Grandma squinted her eyes. Ugh, does anyone else smell that? My face twisted in disgust. Yeah, yuck, Stacy exclaimed in agreement sticking her tongue out and rolling her eyes in the back of her head. Grandpa hacked and gagged. Oh, yeah, I do. I think it's coming from upstairs. Hold on, I'll see what it is. He hurried up the stairs, the squeaking of the stairs beneath him filling the house. We could hear the whine and screech of door hinges from the third floor. Hey, John, we could hear him say. John? Oh my god, Grandpa screamed. I haven't heard a scream like that before, and I don't think I will again. Grandpa rushed downstairs. Tommy, take Stacy to your room. Don't come out until I say. What? 
I said, confused and scared. Don't ask questions. Just do it, he interrupted. Peggy, call 911, he barked. Grandma rushed over to the phone while I took Stacy up to my room. Stacy sat down on the bed. What's going on? I don't know, I replied. Her eyes filled with tears. Is anyone hurt? My friend said he was going to get kin from John. I hope he's okay. My blood turned cold in my veins. The sound of sirens filled the air. I looked out the window and saw an ambulance in the driveway. My grandmother appeared to be hysterical. Grandpa seemed to be stoic as he talked to the paramedics. I continued watching through the window. They carried out a body with a sheet draped over it. Grandpa and Grandma were silent for the rest of the day. Feeling solemn, confused and afraid, we decided to stay inside. We watched old reruns of Tom and Jerry. After a while, Grandma and Grandpa sent us to bed. That night, I was wide awake all night. I could hear Grandpa talking to Grandma downstairs beneath my floor. His voice was too muffled to understand clearly, so I got down on the ground and pressed my ear to the floor. The wood as cold as January ice. I heard him say, oh, What a way to go. Of all the ways you could kill yourself. His voice got muffled until I couldn't hear him at all so I gave up and returned to my bed. As I was about to drift off to sleep, I heard a voice from outside my door. More skin. The sound of Robin's chirping woke me from my slumber. Sun rays bled in through the blinds, filling the room with their opalescent hue. Instead of the smell of pancakes or French toast filling my nostrils... I only smelt French vanilla roast. Stacy's loud snores rang out through the hallway. I slowly walked out of my room and started down the stairs. I stopped on the fifth one. I was able to see Nick and Grandpa sitting at the kitchen table. Nick's back was to me, but Grandpa was in decent view. His eyes were red and puffy, looking like he was sick, and he was holding a balled up napkin in his hand. I'd never seen him like this before. Grandpa wiped his nose with a napkin. Oh, man, it was horrible. There was blood everywhere. Just hearing him utter that made me feel horrible for him. I didn't know what had happened to John, but apparently it was taking its toll on my grandfather. Nick shook his head. Awful. I don't know what I would have done in your situation. Grandpa's head lowered into his hands. He stared into his coffee for a few seconds. I know we've seen a lot during the war, but... Oh, seeing that... Nick took a long drink from his coffee. All these years later, I still hear the voices. Still hear the screaming, so... Yeah, I understand. You weren't expecting that. No one would. Grandpa lifted his head. You're the only one with a strong stomach... I can't tell Peggy. She gets all teary-eyed when I broach the subject. Nick stretched and reclined back in his chair. Understandable. I'd understand if you sold this place and moved on. No, I'm not leaving this house. I built it with my own two hands. I've raised a child and grandchildren here. Spent most of my life here. I'm staying here until I'm dead, Grandpa said. Nick stuffed his hand into his pocket pulled out a cigarette pack, then flipped the top open, examining the smokes. You always were a very prideful, Joe. Grandpa leaned forward. Mm. You've been smoking upstairs. Nick stuffed the pack back into his jeans. No, but now that you mention it, I have been smelling smoke and hearing a clang at night. Also, I've been hearing someone whispering outside my door. Sometimes... I'm not sure if it's real or the illness. I can't make out what the voice is saying, but it keeps telling me to get frish zin. Grandpa squinted his eyes and pursed his lips. Hmm, frish zin? Nick shrugged his shoulders. Beats the hell out of me, Joe. 
Do you think I know what fresh zen is? Also, about that smoke, I hate to accuse anyone, but I think Tommy might be sneaking up to my room and stealing my six. Grandpa bored his hands into his fists. Ah, he would never do that. Joe. Nick sat back inside. Who else could it be? I don't smoke in the house. Grandpa jumped up from his chair. Liar. Nick stuck his hands up defensively. Look, Joe, I've noticed my smoke's missing. I may be old, but my mind's not gone yet, so who else could it be? The two went silent for only a few seconds, but it felt like an eternity. Nick looked at his watch. Oh, shit, it's nine. Thanks for the coffee, Joe. I've got to get going now. The screeching of the chair sliding on the wood caused me to cover my ears. It was like nails on a chalkboard. I turned to go back upstairs and made it to the top. Tommy, I need to speak with you, I heard my grandfather say. I turned and saw Grandpa at the bottom of the stairs with his arms crossed and lips pursed. There was a hardness in his eyes that I had never seen before. Uh, yes, Grandpa? First off, were you eavesdropping? Grandpa asked. My head dropped. I couldn't look him in the eye. Uh, but no. Grandpa lifted my head up with his hand. Tommy, I thought you knew better. You need to respect other people's privacy. I turned to go back upstairs. I'm sorry, Grandpa. Oh, and I know you're stealing Nick's cigarettes and smoking them, he added. I turned and scrunched my eyebrows. What? There's no other way the house is smelling like smoke. Why are you smoking? He asked. I wanted to feel grown up, I said, letting my head drop in shame, knowing he wouldn't believe me if I told him about the ghosts. Grandpa shook his head disapprovingly. Okay, follow me. He grabbed my collar and dragged me behind the shed. Weeds five foot tall lined the back. You want to act like a grown-up? Well, you're going to work like one. I'll get you a pair of gloves. I want all of these weeded. I looked at him incredulously. <laughs> That's going to take all day. I thought I'd be able to go with Lily. Well, you've lost that too. It's part of your punishment, Mr. Smoker. He left quickly and returned with a pair of gloves. After weeding for what felt like hours, I heard Grandma pushing Stacy on the swing. Wee! Push me higher, Grandma! I turned my head and saw Grandma pushing Stacy on the swing. Grandma stared daggers at me while Stacy stuck her tongue out. As I worked, I felt that awful feeling in the pit of my gut. The same feeling I got when I caught John staring at me. I suspected someone was looking down at me from one of the windows on the top floor. I hesitantly looked up. I saw a familiar zip-covered face staring down at me. His face didn't fit right, as if he was wearing a Halloween mask that was too big. The lips parted into a terrible smile, and a charred finger pointed at me. Your skin, the face mouthed. Nausea sunk its cruel claws into me. Bile moved from my stomach and out of my mouth in a second. Yellow, viscous vomit shot from my mouth like flames from a dragon's maw. Horrible, yellow mess with bright pink bits of pork dripped down the wall. The terrible mixture looked like a very gooey bacon and cheese omelette. Horrible tasting meat, flavoured slime covered my tongue. I didn't dare swallow it. I spat until all the puke was purged from my mouth. The familiar bell chime filled the air. I turned to see Lily behind me. She looked disgusted, with good reason. Oh, you've got a little... She pointed to the left side of my mouth. I wiped my mouth clean. Thanks. I can't go to the bookstore. Why? She asked. I got caught smoking. Bad boy, huh? She pulled out a small piece of paper and a pen. She quickly scribbled down something on the paper. <laughs> Call me sometime, bad boy. Okay, I will. She shrugged her shoulders. Maybe next time. 
and she rolled off. Collected myself and finished pulling the weeds. I made my way out from behind the shed and headed for the door. Hey! I heard a voice say. I turned and saw Nick getting out of his car. He smiled, exposing yellow, green teeth. He slammed his car door shut. Is it hard enough for you? I wiped my sweat from my brow. Asshole. He marched over to me with his fists clenched. What was that? You better watch your tongue, boy, or I'll tear it out. A lump formed in my throat. He reached into his pocket and pulled out a buck knife. I know you're stealing from me. He grabbed my collar. If you steal from me again, I'll take your skin. You can tell your grandfather I threatened you, but why would he believe you? You're a filthy smoker. He let go of me, and I ran into the house. I went inside and showered. After the shower, as I was putting on my Bledsoe jersey and sweats, the scent of meatloaf and mashed potatoes had snuck under the door and filled the bathroom, making my mouth water and my stomach growl. I hesitantly walked into the kitchen. Everyone was sat at the table, eating. Come, sit, Grandpa said. I took a seat, and he filled my plate with food. Maybe I was a little too harsh, but you can't smoke. I know you're not a dumb kid. I know you're at the age where you want to rebel. You think you're able to make your own decisions. Well, you aren't old enough to make that type of decision yet. You need to wait until you're of legal age. I had a friend when I was a kid. He started smoking at 12. He died at 47. We just care about you. We don't want you to get hurt. I didn't know what to do. I wanted to tell them about the ghosts and Nick, but I couldn't. I was so overwhelmed I felt like crying. Tears fell from my eyes and landed on my mashed potatoes. If I told them, they'd think I was lying and I'd be in trouble again. (sighs) There was something wrong with me. I must have done something horrible to deserve the torment of the hands of the ghosts and Nick. I'm sorry, I said. Grandpa patted me on the shoulder. It's okay, Tommy. You should eat. I cleared my plate without another word. After dinner, I went straight to bed, not having the energy to sit through a movie. I laid in my bed, staring at the ceiling, waiting for sleep to come not caring if the man came for my skin. I could hear Nick talking to himself upstairs. sounded like he was arguing with someone. Perhaps it was that voice he was telling Grandpa about. My eyelids were heavy, and I was exhausted. My eyes shut, and I fell into a dreamless sleep. My door slowly creaked open. Then I smelt that awful smell. Her breath touched my face. It smelled like smoldering flesh. Ski, a voice said. My eyes snapped open. Nick was standing over me with a knife raised above his head. I could see my scared expression in his shiny bald head. My heart was beating rapidly, and my whole body began to shake like I'd been left out in below zero weather. I wanted to scream until my throat bled, but I couldn't yell. No sound would come out. When I opened my mouth, I could only let out a whimper. (laughs) was all I could manage. He plunged the knife downward, aiming for my chest. Fresh skin. I put my hand out defensively, and the knife stabbed through my palm. The other end of the blade dripped with blood. Blood rushed from the wound. It flowed down my arm, drenching the limb. The horrible, burning pain was radiating through my hand. Tears and mucus rushed down my face, meeting and combining at my upper lip, creating a moustache of bodily fluid. Something warm and squishy filled the back of my pants. I opened my mouth to scream, gooey strands of saliva hanging from the roof of my mouth and touching the top of my tongue. Help! Nick pulled the knife from my hand, and blood sprayed onto him as he withdrew the blade. He pushed my jersey up, exposing bare flesh. The edge of the blade pressed against my chest, vertically pushing the blade upward 
drawing blood and creating a searing sensation. Blood gushed from my chest wound, covering my chest and abdomen. Crimson spilled onto blue fabric. My door flew open, Grandpa tackling Nick to the ground. What the f... Grandpa said. His sentence was interrupted by a slash to the throat. Blood spilled down his wife beater, staining the fabric cranberry red. He wrapped his hands around the wound, trying to stop the bleeding. Nick stood over Grandpa, a sick smile spreading across his face. He was panting, as if he'd just run six miles. Fresh skill. He raised the knife above his head. Grandpa tackled him again with his last bit of strength. The blade slid across the floor. Grandpa's hands wrapped around Nick's throat. His face was as purple as an eggplant. Blood dripped onto his face. Nick threw Grandpa off of him as if he were nothing. Both of them scurried for the knife. Grandpa got to it first. My vision began to fade. All I remember is Grandpa raising the blade above his head. And then... Darkness. I woke up in a hospital room with Grandma, Dad, Mom, and Stacy standing at the foot of my bed, their eyes red and puffy from crying. Grandma and Mom were wiping their eyes with a tissue. Stacy wiped her runny nose with her sleeve. Dad didn't shed a tear. Grandpa was nowhere in sight. Where's Grandpa? I asked. Tears rolled down my mother's tan skin as her pink lips quivered. Grandpa, Grandpa's... Her body racked with sobs as she tried to get the words out. Grandpa's... She dropped to her knees and she buried her hands into her face and then fell to her side. Dad bent down next to her. He rested his hand on top of her shoulder. What about Nick? I asked. Dad looked at me. There was a look in his eyes I'd never seen before. Dead. I didn't know how to feel. I could hardly think straight. My eyelids felt like they weighed a thousand pounds. They shut. And that acrid stench filled my nostrils again. My eyes opened and I saw the horrible facsimile of John's face. The man took his cigarette and jammed it into my eye. I felt like my entire face was on fire. He pushed it deeper and deeper, twisting it as he laughed. My eye snapped open and I sat straight up. I was drenched in sweat and noticed a dark splotch on my blanket. I spent a few days in the hospital and was released with a bandage wrapped around my hand and a bandage on my chest. Mum pulled me into a tight bear hug and kissed me on the cheek. We're going to go home. Dad, Grandma and Stacy are waiting for us. Okay, I replied. We got into her car. Mum pulled out of the driveway and then pulled out into the road. So, what happens now? I asked. Mum stifled a sob. Well, I already made arrangements for the wake and the funeral. The service will be in a few days. I watched her in the rear view, tears rolling down her cheeks. Her hand covered her mouth. She sniffed and swallowed, trying to compose herself. We drove home in silence. A loud roar of thunder bellowed from the heavens as rain smashed against the windows. We pulled into our driveway. Green, peeling paint covered the house. The lawn was overgrown and yellowed, A tree branch scraped against the roof of the car. She parked in front of the garage, packed with bobbleheads, movie posters, sports cars, and various other knick-knacks. Mum sighed. Your father needs to find another place for the stuff from the store. I'm tired of not being able to park in the garage. She looked at the back seat and pursed her lips. I forgot my umbrella. We're going to have to run to avoid the rain, Tommy. We rushed out of the car. And despite our best efforts to avoid the rain, we got soaked. 
You two look like you got out of the swimming pool, we heard Dad say as we cleaned our feet on the welcome mat. He scratched his black beard that was so long it rested on his beer belly. He didn't even acknowledge my bandaged hand or chest. Mom pointed a stubby little finger in Dad's face. Bill, you gotta do something about that garage. It's ridiculous that you have all that shit packed in there. Dad's shoulders slacked, exasperatedly. There's nowhere else to put it. There's zero room at the store. That warehouse is as packed as it's gonna get. Mom shook her head. Figure it out, Bill. That crap isn't gonna be in there much longer. Whatever, Dad said. When are they coming home? I heard Stacy ask as I walked into the living room. Stacy was sitting on the couch facing Grandma. Grandma noticed me and smiled. Turn around. Stacy turned and her face lit up. She jumped off the couch and charged at me with her arms wide open. She wrapped her arms around me. How's your hand? It's better, I replied. Grandma noticed the time on the clock on the wall and she got off the couch. All right, everyone. I'm going to be heading home now. Are you sure you want to be in that house alone? Mum asked. Grandma headed for the door. Regardless of what has happened, I want to be in my own house. My husband built that house. I spent most of my life in that house, and nothing is going to drive me out. Okay, I understand, Mum said. I felt pretty tired. I wanted to lay down in my own bed. I'm going to go upstairs and lay down. Okay, I'll call you down when it's time for dinner. I'm making meatloaf, Dad said. I climbed the stairs and went into my bedroom. Lying down, I let everything sink in. I knew nothing would be the same again. One of the most important people in my life had just died. I wish I could have done something more. If I would have gotten up and helped Grandpa fight Nick, maybe he'd still be alive. Grandma's life will never be the same. She's trying to keep her spirits high for everyone, but I know she's in great pain. Tears streamed down my cheeks and out of the corners of my eyes, drenching the pillow. My heart thudded in my chest, and my stomach began to ache. I turned on my side and curled up. The burning started again in my hand. I needed pain meds, but I was too weak to get up, and too feeble to call out for help. The smell of smoke filled my room. My eyes slammed shut, and I fell into unconsciousness. I woke up in an abyss of darkness. I didn't know how I got there, or how long I'd been there. Help! I screamed. Scared. I heard someone say. Smoke filled my nostrils. Oddly, it smelled like burnt meat. I dropped to my knees. No, 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 no. All he wants is your skin, a familiar voice said. I turned to see John, plaid shirt unbuttoned, exposing his pale fat gut. Splotches of blood covered the pale flesh. Dirty, unkempt hair spilled down his shoulders. Blood, exposed nerves and muscle served as his face. All you have to do is give him your skin, he said. Why me? Was all I could muster through heavy sobs. You angered him. Now he can't rest until he gets your skin. If you can't get yours, he'll take everyone's around you. I noticed something shiny in John's hand. After a second glimpse, I realized he was holding a knife. He offered it to me. Your skin. I shook my head incredulously. <laughs> I, I can't. I don't blame you for crying. You're just a boy. But if you give him your skin, all this will end. No one else has to die. Think of your mom. Think of grandma. Think of Stacy. I was terrified, but he was right. The thing wanted me, and if it didn't get my skin, it'd take someone else's. 
I took the knife in my hand and pressed the cold edge against my forearm. What the fuck? John said. I looked up at him, confused. His mouth hung agape. A loud screeching emitted from his mouth that sounded like an alarm. My eyes snapped open, and I was standing in the kitchen. A puddle of yellow liquid pooled around my feet. The awful screaming of the fire detector reverberated throughout the house. Dad grabbed the knife from my hand. His face was as red as magma. What the f- Bill, stop, Mom said. I ran upstairs to my room, and as I laid in my bed, John's words echoed in my mind. I woke up from a dreamless slumber, still feeling sick. I had one glaring question swimming around in my mind. Was what I saw last night real? It looked real, smelt and tasted real, but it couldn't have been real. I knew being at home should have put me at ease, but it didn't. Tommy, it's time for breakfast, Mom called. I walked into the kitchen. Mom, Dad and Stacy were sitting around the table. Mom poured me a bowl of cereal and handed it to me. We're going to have to eat fast so we can get into the shower and get to Grandpa's wake on time. Dad swallowed a mouthful of cereal. What time is the wake? Mom raised her eyebrows. It's at ten. Why? She pursed her lips. Her eyes bulged out of her skull, knowing what he was going to say. Dad's face turned as red as an apple. I'm going to try and get a few hours in at the store. No! Mom flipped her cereal bowl, sending milk and bits of debris everywhere. I'm tired of you putting that store before everything else. I just lost someone very close to me, and all you can do is think of yourself. She stood over Dad. The veins in her neck pulsated. Specks of spit flew from her mouth, hitting Dad in the face. Stop fighting, Stacy cried. She fled from the table and ran upstairs to her room. Dad's arms were stretched out in front of him defensively. Okay, I'll stay here. Mom took a deep breath and then exhaled. We all need to start getting ready now. Tommy, help your sister get ready. I'm going to go and get in the shower. I grabbed Stacy by her hand and led her to her room. She sat on the bed while I removed clothes from her dresser. Why doesn't Daddy love us? I feel like he loves the store more than us, Stacy said. I put her clothes next to her. He loves us. He just doesn't show it like he should. I didn't know what else to say. At three years old, she'd hit the nail on the head. Dad did love the store more than anything or anyone else. Once the shower was free, Stacy went in and I went into my room and got my clothes out. I could hear Dad downstairs talking to himself. Ungrateful. Everyone's ungrateful. I work myself raw to the bone, and this is how I'm treated. I need a smoke. The front door slammed. Stacy finished. I quickly showered, and then Dad showered. When everyone was ready, we got into the car. During the drive... Mom kept sneering at Dad every time he glanced at her. Stacy's eyes were still red and puffy. She spent the whole ride looking downward, not speaking to anyone. Grandma was waiting outside the funeral home. She held a balled-up tissue in her hand. Her nose dripped with snot, and her face was drenched with tears. Grandma! Stacy rushed at Grandma and wrapped her arms around her. Mom wrapped her arms around her too. Are you ready? I'm as ready as I'll ever be, Jenny, Grandma said. We formed the condolence line inside. Family I'd never seen before had filled the place. Everyone was crying, but I felt nothing. Grandpa was the person that loved me more than my father, and I felt nothing. I don't know why I didn't feel anything. I wanted to cry, but... For some reason, I couldn't. The only familiar faces were Mr. Williams and Lily. He and Lily weren't their happy, upbeat selves that I'd seen at the picnic. A frown stretched across Mr. Williams's face. 
His eyes looked to be a deeper shade of blue, and he dragged his feet when he walked. He embraced Mom. I'm so sorry, Jenny. He embraced the rest of us one by one and expressed his condolences. Lily hugged me. If you ever need someone to talk to, I'm here for you. There's a table with a blue cloth covering it. Candles were scattered all over the table, right next to the coffin. The candle's waxy vanilla smell permeated the room. I tried not to look at Grandpa. He was as pale as the little girl on the tricycle I'd seen on the first night I'd stayed at my grandparents' house. It didn't look like he was dead. It looked like he was sleeping. His eyes began to move as if he were trying to open them. And his lips curled up into a grin. I took a deep breath and slowly exhaled. Mr. Williams tripped and knocked the candles over, catching the tablecloth on fire. He tried to fan the flames. The smell of burnt fabric offended my olfactory immediately, giving me a headache and causing me to feel sick. I massaged my temples in an attempt to ease the pain, but the smell kept growing stronger. The funeral director hosed the table with an extinguisher. Mum walked over to me. Are you okay? Scared, her voice said. Oh no, 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 I cried. I looked up to see Grandpa sitting up in his coffin. Scared. Blood gushed from his neck wound. I pointed at the coffin. He's... he's alive. What? Mum bit her lower lip, and there was a hint of worry in her eyes. Dad just gawked at me like everyone else, looking at me as if I were some sort of freak or idiot. Stacy rushed at the coffin. Grandpa, he's alive. Stacy, come back, Mum called after her. I blinked my eyes and Grandpa was no longer sitting up. Mum sat us down. The rest of the wake was a blur, and so was the funeral. As we left, Dad apologized for my outburst. He didn't care about me. He only cared about what others thought of us. When we got home, I headed straight to my room without saying a word to anyone. I could hear my mom and dad downstairs talking. What's wrong with that kid? Dad asked. Stop, Bill. I just want to try and have a peaceful night and go to bed. Please don't start any trouble, Mom said. He doesn't act right, Jen. How do you expect him to act? Not like that. Tommy, it's time for dinner, Mom called. I'm not hungry, I said. Tommy, your mother made a meal. Get down here and eat this instant, Dad demanded. I didn't respond. Rage filled me and boiled over. Dad didn't care. He was pretending to care. I was fed up and rushed down the stairs filled with anger. Mum and Stacy were sat at the dinner table, cutting into their steaks, while Dad was rooting around in the fridge for something. I marched over to the fridge and slammed the door on him. You don't care about me. The only thing you care about is the store, and you treat everyone and everything else like an inconvenience. You didn't even ask me how I was when I came home from the hospital. At the wake, when I was freaking out, you didn't even try to check on me. You apologize for my outburst to people that don't even care about us. Dad's face became as red as a dragon's flames. He delivered a hard slap to my cheek. I work my ass off for you. I apologize for your outburst because you made an ass out of yourself in front of the whole family. Mom quickly got up from her seat and got in between us. Bill, let him be. He pushed her to the ground and she landed with a heavy thud. Stay out of this cow. I felt something burning through me. It spread through my entire body. I felt like I was on fire and my heart was about to explode. The hot pain spread across my face like fire through a forest. Bullshit. You only work for yourself. You better watch your tongue, boy. Fuck you. He punched me in the face, knocking me to the ground and splitting my lip open. A taste of copper filled my mouth and blood rolled down my chin. He crouched down in front of me, 
so his face was level with mine. His eyes were filled with hate, like the eyes of a bull that's seen red, or the eyes of a rattlesnake. Any other comments? I spat a gooey red glob in his face. Fuck you. He could have killed me, and it wouldn't even have mattered. In fact, I wanted him to. Mum got up from the floor and forced herself in between my father and I. Bill, stop, or I'm calling the cops. Dad stood up. Fine. He walked away. Mum helped me to my feet. Let's get you cleaned up. She walked me to the bathroom and cleaned me up, and then sent me to bed. I drifted off to sleep. A few hours later, I woke up feeling a pressure in my bladder. On the way to the bathroom, I could hear Mum and Dad talking from their room. He needs help, Bill, Mum said. I want to send him to boot camp, Dad said. He needs therapy, Bill. He needs someone to straighten him out. His grandfather just died. He's obviously not dealing with this well. I'm setting him up with a therapist I used to see. God, have some consideration and empathy for someone else besides yourself for once. Fine. We'll try therapy first. I quickly finished in the bathroom, and then went back to bed, wondering what was in store for me. My eyes opened, and I stared at the ceiling for what felt like an eternity. Tendrils of smoke seeping through the cracks of my door. The sweet smell of buttermilk landed on my taste buds. Pancakes weren't enough to get me out of bed. Tommy? Mum called. I was uncertain about therapy, but it was either this or boot camp. I would have to lie about what was bothering me. If I told the therapist about the ghosts, I'd be locked into a small white room. Tommy, time for breakfast, she called again. After a few seconds, my stomach started to growl, and I couldn't ignore the hunger pains, and so I headed downstairs. Dad, Mom, and Stacy were sitting at the kitchen table, eating. A platter of pancakes sat in the middle of the table, along with a bottle of syrup, a gallon of milk, and a gallon of orange juice. I sat down and served myself. Mom poured herself a glass of orange juice. Tommy, your father and I have noticed that You've been having some issues. My heart began to work overtime. I felt weak, and I felt as if a knot was twisting in my stomach. My appetite was gone, and I wanted to go back to bed for ten years. I placed the syrup down and let my head drop. You're not in trouble, son. We're just concerned is all, Dad said. I poked at my breakfast with my fork, but no longer was I hungry. I knew he was still pretending to care about me. He was only happy the cops weren't called last night. I know. Mom finished her juice. You have an appointment with Mr. Warner at nine. I looked at the clock hanging on the wall. The meeting was in an hour. Okay. As I finished my breakfast, I noticed a terrible smell. It smelled like someone had just finished a five-hour workout and hadn't bothered to shower. I scrunched up my face. What's that smell? Mom sniffed the air and then covered her nose. That's you, Tom. Ooh, Stacy added, pinching her nose closed. Dad slowly got up from the table. You should shower before you leave, son. After breakfast, I jumped in the shower. Time must have escaped me because when I came downstairs after the shower, Mum was waiting by the door, jacket on and keys in her hand. Mum opened the door to leave. All right, we'll be back soon. We got into the car and headed off. You can't tell Warner what happened last night, Mum said. Why? I asked. Your father will go to jail. I shrugged my shoulders. Doesn't seem to be my problem. Mum sucked her lip in. He's just trying to take care of you. I whipped my head in her direction. He tried to kill me last night. Mom sighed. He didn't try and kill you, Tommy. I bit my lower lip almost hard enough to draw blood. Dad doesn't care about us. He proved it last night. 
He never does anything for anyone unless it benefits him or makes him look good. It's always on you, all right, to take care of Stacy. You're only with him because you're afraid of being alone. Tears fell from Mom's face. You need to be the man your father isn't willing to be. I understand that he's hard to deal with, but he's your father and he cares about you. He might not show it in the way that he should, but he cares about you. Before I knew it, we'd arrived at Mr. Warner's office. On the way in, we passed by a man smoking a cigarette. A cloud of grey smoke engulfed us, and we both coughed violently. Mum scowled at the eye. <sighs> Second-hand kills, man. When we walked into the building, Mr. Warner was waiting for us outside his office. He wore a black button-down shirt with black jeans to match. Red lips parted into a smile, exposing white rows of ivory. A neatly trimmed moustache lined his face. For someone who looked like they should have been in their late fifties or sixties, he seemed to be in very good shape. He extended his hand outward for me to shake it. How are you, Tommy? I was nervous. I didn't want to make eye contact at first. Good. He motioned for me to follow him. Oh, let's head into my office. I followed him to his room. It was plain. Eggshell white walls and a framed degree hung on the wall behind it. He pointed to a chair sitting across from his desk. Tommy, have... His face turned black as oil. Patches of his face were red as a tomato. And the room smelled like an ashtray. That horrible... Sickening flavor of smoldering flesh filled my mouth and ravaged my taste buds. Skin, he hissed. I backed away until my back was against the wall. No, 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 no. He stood up from behind his desk and walked after me. Skin. After fumbling with the handle for a second... I looked back at the thing that was following me, all burnt and charred. It reached its hand out to me, trying to grab me. I tore the door open and ran for the exit, screaming. Mom rushed after me. Tommy, what's wrong? I curled up into a ball in the corner of the lobby, shaking and crying. He's trying to take my skin. The smell ebbed, and a hand rested on my shoulder. I turned to see Mr. Warner instead of a monster. It's okay, Tommy. No one's going to hurt you here. I'm going to help you. All fear left my body. I'm okay, I think. He offered me his hand. Why don't we go back to my office and talk for a bit? I grabbed it and pulled myself up. Okay. He pushed a bowl of hard candy at me. What happened to your lip? I rubbed where my lip was split. Oh, I um, fell off my skateboard. <laughs> I was being stupid. Trying to do tricks I saw on TV without ever doing them before. Hmm, gotta be more careful. So, do you mind telling me what upset you so much? I popped a candy into my mouth. Oh, it's the smell of smoke that makes me crazy. Every time I smell smoke, I'm brought back to that night my grandfather died. My grandpa's friend, Nick, killed him. That night, I smelled the awful smell of cigarette smoke. When I woke up, Nick was standing over my bed with a knife. Any time I think about that night, I can smell that exact smoke. I, I can taste it. I feel so guilty. I feel like I should have died. If I'd done something else other than just lay there, maybe my grandpa would still be alive. And it's only cigarette smoke that makes you feel this way, Warner asked. All smoke is starting to smell the same. Also, clanging triggers me too, like the clanging of a tricycle bell. Warner took a tissue and blew his nose. Hmm, I see. You shouldn't feel guilty. It's not your fault, Tommy. You're only a kid. What could you have done? If you got up and tried to fight, maybe you would have gotten killed too. My lips quivered and mucus rolled down my face. Mr. Warner handed me a tissue. Before I knew it, time was up. On the way to the car, a ringing sound filled the air. 
Mum reached into her bag and pulled her Nokia out. Hey, Mum? What? No, there's no girl on a tricycle clanging about. My stomach turned to mush, and my legs felt like jello. What's going on? She put the phone back in her bag. Um, we're going to stop by Grandma's real quick before we go home. My heart began to race as I got into the car. I sunk into my seat and tried to calm down. Mom pushed the key into the ignition and turned it. The car came to life. We were on the way to Grandma's house. We pulled into the driveway and quickly entered the house. Mom ripped the door open. Mom! I'm in the living room, Grandma replied. We entered the living room. Grandma was sitting on the couch with her arms wrapped around her, rocking back and forth, eyes wild and darting side to side. There was a little girl on a tricycle. Mom scrunched her eyebrows in disbelief. She searched the house and then returned to the living room. There's no one here. Grandma sucked in her lower lip and pointed her bony finger at Mum. I'm telling you, there was a girl here riding a tricycle. She was clanging a bell and laughing like hell. I'm not crazy. I know what I saw. Mum pointed her stubby finger at Grandma. There's no girl here, Mum. I just looked and we're the only ones here. Grandma sat back and crossed her arms. Bullshit. Mom placed her hands on her hips. Stop talking bullshit. Grandma leaned forward. Go to hell. Go to hell? You caught me talking about bullshit. Make us worry, and then you tell me to go to hell? You go to hell. Mom screamed. Grandma flicked her top tooth with a thumb at Mom. You're lucky your father isn't alive. Mom balled her hands into fists, as if she were about to strike Grandma. You're lucky my father isn't alive. He'd be ashamed of how you're acting. Grandma got up and walked to her bedroom. Get out or I'm calling the cops. I'm going to check on you in the morning, Mom said. We headed out. Mom placed a hand on my shoulder. I shouldn't have lost my temper like that. I was wrong, but she's just harder to deal with now that Grandpa's dead. We left and quickly drove home. When we got through the door, Stacy rushed toward Mom and wrapped her tiny arms around her. I'm hungry, Mommy. Mom stormed into the living room. Your father should have fed you. Dad was sleeping on the couch. Mom shook him. Bill, you were supposed to feed Stacy. He continued to sleep. She whacked him on the head. Bill Wilcox. Dad's eyes slowly opened. What? She poked her stubby finger in his chest. You should have fed your daughter while we were gone. He sat up and stretched. I've just been tired from working. She pushed her finger deeper into his pudgy chest. I don't want to hear any excuses. You keep putting everything else before your family. Dad got up off the couch. Okay. He walked into the kitchen and put something in the microwave. Stacy sat at the kitchen table. After a few minutes, the microwave beeped and Dad took a bowl of mac and cheese out and placed it on the table in front of her. Mom pulled out a chair from the table to sit. I'm going to have to check on Mom at least once a day. Dad handed Stacy a plastic fork. Why? Mom ran her fingers through her hair. Because she was going on about a little girl riding a tricycle around the house. Dad pulled out a chair too. It must be the age. Mum sat up in her chair and leaned forward. I'm going to go over in the morning. Dad picked bits of stuff out of his beard. I'm going to have to go in early tomorrow. Probably around six. Mum's face sunk. Bill, you need to be here for Stacy. Stacy turned to Dad. I was looking forward to spending time with you, Daddy. She had a smile spread across her face and was looking at him lovingly. Mom scowled at Dad. He patted Stacy on the head. Oh, I'll tell Buck I'm going to be a bit late. Mom grinned. Good. 
I sat there quietly as I thought about what else was in the house with Grandma. The next morning I was awoken by the sound of a hairdryer coming from the bathroom. The noise was giving me a headache, so I went to see if whoever was using it was almost done. I peered through the crack of the door and saw Mum. Are you almost done? Oh, the noise is hurting my head. She turned off the blow dryer. I'm done now. I'm going to go to Grandma's house soon. My stomach ached with worry. Can I go too? Mom removed a brush from the drawer and brushed her hair. Sure, you should put her some fresh clothes. Did you take a shower? I let the silence linger in the air. She rolled her eyes and sighed. Just go get changed. I got changed and my mom finished getting ready. We went downstairs. Dad was stuffing his face with candy while Stacy watched cartoons. Stacy got up, walked over to Dad, and she put her hand out. Me too. Dad dumped some candy in her hand. Here you go. Make sure she gets some real food, Bill, Mom said. All right, he said, through a mouthful of chocolate. As we approached the vehicle, I got that sick feeling in my gut again. I started thinking about what Grandma was talking about the last time I saw her. We pulled into her driveway. As we walked up the walkway, we heard Grandma scream from inside the house. We rushed into the house and found her curled up on the living room floor. There was a small pool of blood forming underneath her body. A bloody knife was laying next to her. Mum rushed over to Grandma, trying to help her up, but she couldn't lift her. What happened? A patch of skin was missing on her hand. Labored breaths escaped her mouth, eyes wild as if she'd seen something unspeakable. She weakly lifted her head up. A man was asking for my skin. Mom scrunched her eyebrows in concern. What? Grandma grabbed Mom's pant leg. Skin. I gave him my skin. Mum rushed over to the phone. Jesus Christ. She quickly dialed 911. Yeah, my, my elderly mother fell and she can't get up. And she cut herself and she's bleeding badly. She slumped in her seat. Tears streamed down her cheeks. I, I can't lose another one. I, I just can't. I felt like something was watching us. The scent of smoke filled the room and a low clang filled my ears. My legs felt like they were trapped in wet cement, and my lungs felt like they were filled with it too. My heart began pounding rapidly. One of the people I loved the most was the victim of something awful, something so evil and hateful it transcended human understanding. This thing wasn't going to stop until it had taken everything from me. A feeling of fear and despair swept through me like a roaring tidal wave. As Grandma lay on the floor, I wondered what was going to happen to her. I didn't want to skin myself. <laughs> That'd be too painful. But if I weren't around, would that fix things? Would the ghost leave everyone alone if I were dead? He would. My death would be just as good as my skin. It was my fault all this had happened. I grabbed the knife laying next to Grandma. What are you doing? Mom screamed. I dug the knife into my wrist and dragged the blade down vertically, blood spilling down my arm. You'll all be safe soon. Mum rushed at me. Stop! She wrapped her hands around the knife. Tommy! Tommy, please, stop! I need to do this, Mum. I screamed. She ripped the knife from my hands and I fell to the ground with a thud. I lied on the ground and writhed in agony. It felt like someone had splashed gasoline on my wrist and then thrown a match on me. I needed to die. My death would make sure everyone else was safe. The smell of smoke got stronger, as well as the clanging. I faded in and out. Sirens screamed in the distance. As my vision became more and more blurry, the man stood over me, grinning. He was muttering something over and over. I could hardly make it out. No escape, he said. 
Everything faded to black. I woke up in a hospital bed with Mum, Dad and Stacy standing at the foot of it, a bandage wrapped around my wrist. I sat up, scratching my head in confusion, not being able to remember what had happened. Where's Grandma? They're taking care of her in a different room, Tommy, Mum said. Is she going to be okay? I asked. Yes, you just rest. My head started feeling heavier. I let it drop and sink into the pillow. I stared at a plain white wall for what felt like years. The words no escape rattled around in my mind. No one was safe. I can't die. It won't let me die. I laid there wondering what would happen to everyone else. What would happen with no escape? So there you go, a long one to help all of you working through the night shift, doing the long haul drive. I hope that helps the time pass a bit more quickly. Oh, exhausted again. These long videos do take it out of me. But rest assured, I will be back again with you on Monday. Of course I will, with a brand new story for you all. Until then, I need a bit of a break. You deserve one too, so hoping you all have a nice weekend. Till next time, sweet dreams and bye-bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, Looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so come check me out, okay?